Uh, hello to everyone. I uh, wish all are safe and doing well. Uh, today we uh, will spend almost an hour uh, with such an interesting subject, uh, which called the geologic modeling or reservoir modeling. So uh, we'll start with the content of uh, our lecture today. Uh, so we'll start as usual with an introduction. Uh, this will be followed by uh, answering some questions like what's geologic modeling or reservoir modeling? What are modeling used for? Uh, what are model inputs and outputs? Uh, what are modeling steps? What are key planning issues? Uh, and then we'll uh, uh, understand how to build a structure and stratigraphic framework uh, and fishes modeling, property modeling, and then evaluating the geologic models. Uh, and at, by the end, we incorporate the feedback. And after that, I will summarize to you what, the, what are the key points uh, for the reservoir model. As an introduction to the geologic modeling, uh, geologic modeling uh, or geological modeling or geomodeling or reservoir modeling is applied science uh, of creating computerized representations of portions of the subsurface uh, based on geophysical and geological observations. These geological and, and, and geophysical observations actually collected from either from surface like the 3D seismic or from the subsurface like the well logs and core data and also from the outcrops as we are going to see uh, using the geologic concepts and then uh, from the field and well uh, uh, performance we end up with the geologic model for the subsurface. What's the geologic modeling? Geologic modeling is a discipline based on data analysis, uh, synthesis, and above all, integration across disciplines. Uh, geologic modeling or reservoir modeling is recognized as a critical technology, actually, and it is called the static modeling. If we if we are using the geological and geophysical uh, data, the geological model is the only place. Uh, where all data and interpretations come together into a single numerical 3D model. Uh, appreciation of the strengths and limitation of the various inputs is key to properly integrating all the data into the model. All geologic models are to some degree stochastic, and we will understand what it means by stochastic. Uh, and uh, our reservoir, you know, have a lot of heterogeneity. And because of that, instead of using some deterministic uh, uh, methods to build our model, we use this, uh, what we call the stochastic uh, uh, or geostatistical methods to build or distribute our property within the model itself. So the process of integrating all geologic, geophysical, petrophysical, and interpreted or conceptual, uh, conceptual information about the reservoir into a single numerical 3D stochastic model. This is the answer to the question, what is geologic model? So we continue to answer the question. So the geologic model actually is a 3D uh, grid built from subsurface uh, horizons, uh, interpreted from seismic, for example, and faults. The 3D grid, uh, in the, in, uh, uh, the three d grid defines the geometry and structure uh, of the reservoir. Each cell in the 3D grid is filled with a series of properties such as porosity, permeability, water saturation, shale volume, depositional facies or lithofacies. I will understand the difference between both, uh, and the fractured density, for example. 
anatomical dimensions for a George model cell are about 200 feet by 200 feet by one foot. Or it, it depends actually on which stage you are using to build your a George model. So these dimensions are not the standard. You can you can change it actually. Depends on the amount of data you have and how detailed the data you have. But to combine all of these properties together, we must integrate all the different data types, like the tops uh, of the formations, the sequence stratigraphy, uh, a, 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 a discipline uh, or, or interpretation, the stratigraphic correlation, and so. On. So, what are the model or the reservoir model used for. Actually, the most common usage of geologic models or reservoir uh, models is to provide quantitative 3D numeric input to reservoir simulation. But there are other uses as well. So we use it for as an input to reservoir simulation or also uh, it provides capabilities to calculate volumetrics, uh, 3D volumetrics, actually not 2D. So 3D volumetrics is very important to, to, to understand that the, the hydrocarbon initial in place. Uh, most of the modern geologic uh, modeling applications contain uh, some well path planning. You can plan your, your uh, well path uh, to, uh, to reach the target. Uh, having both the structure and the stratigraphic framework, uh, 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 this enables us to, to make what I mean uh, a prediction about the faults uh, and uh, are these faults sealed or non sealed? We'll, we'll talk up more about faults in the next slide uh, to understand it. this is very important in the production uh, time scale. So you can you can identify the faults. Also, you, you we use the model for reservoir surveillance and to visualize a full field uh, fine scale geology. So these are uh, the usage of the geology. So what are model inputs and outputs? What I'm gonna input to build my model and what uh, I will get from uh, out from uh, my model. So different data types and interpretations are required actually to incorporate into geologic models. It is obviously very diverse input that intended to give you a feeling uh, for the scope uh, of the integration challenges in building geology. So, the input will be, uh, or, or I will summarize the input to you in three main categories. Uh, the first one is the uh, interpretations and the prediction derived from seismic data. And the second one is the information we get from uh, interpretations of blocks and, uh, and core data. And the last one is uh, conceptual or analog. So the last category is often the least well appreciated by non-actually modelers. So what I'm going to gain from or what are the outputs of my uh, geological model? The first and, and most important one is the volumetrics. Either gas initial or gas in place or oil in place, the aquifer size, also, you can see the 3D distribution of net pool volume, uh, continuity of the net pool volume, and fine scale permeability structure within the connected pool volume. And then the fault transmissibility. You, you will notice that we talk about the fault several times. So, uh, what are the modeling steps? So uh, there is a standard flow to all modeling projects, actually. So we have to plan to our uh, project, or the modeling, the reservoir modeling project. We have to have our plan. Uh, we have to assemble the resources uh, we need and the data we need to the project. And the resources are not data 
only, but also the, the, the geoscientists that they, they are going to build the geologic model, either geologists, geophysicists, geophysicists, and from different disciplines, actually, the, the petroleum system analysts and so on. And then we build the model framework. This will be followed by building the features model, then the property model, and then quality control and evaluate our model, and then use the model okay, to calculate your metrics, to, to, to find out the places to drill, and so on. And by the end, the modeling is actually a team effort. It's not a, a single person effort, it's a team effort. Uh, and uh, again, and again, and again, it is team effort because no one knows everything. Let's talk about the structure uh, framework. So building a structural framework involves using both structural and stratigraphic services actually. So uh, uh, one approach was to take a set of depth uh, uh, converted 2D grid, grids of four traces, for example, and, and seismic data and build a 3D framework. So we started from 2D and then built a 3D. This was in the old days, uh, But this is a uh, slow, what I mean, uh, 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 application, but a better 3D solution where we take the horizon and fault interpretation in time and import them into the geologic modeling application along with the velocity interpretation to convert time into depth, as we talked in, in the previous lectures, lectures about that. We build a 3D framework in time and then depth converted the entire framework into depth using a velocity model. So the 3D framework includes both structural surfaces uh, and reservoir stratigraphy. And we convert the 3D framework again to a 3D grid by filling uh, the framework with empty cells with uh, a defined internal laying scheme. Uh, what I mean, if, if, if you, your data uh, does not fill the whole cells within your uh, model, you will uh, add some empty cells just uh, for, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, regularity. We mentioned faults several times and even here in, in, in this slide. So why faults matter? Uh, actually, the petroleum industry uses subsurface flow models for two principal purposes. To model the flow of hydrocarbons into traps over geologic time and to simulate the production of hydrocarbons from reservoirs over periods of decades. So, faults can create actual compartments if they are sealed. So, you will have different compartments. If you have a reservoir that is uh, faulted, so, and these faults are sealed faults, you will end up with compartments. So, if you drill a well in one of them, you will not produce uh, uh, the rest of the hydrocarbon in the other compartment. Uh, faults are actually three dimensional, it is not two dimensional as, as we see here. But uh, uh, actually, uh, 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 they are approximated on both a modeling application as planar membrane or whatever. The point is that I want to uh, uh, show to you that uh, faults can be like sealed to compartments, our reservoirs, and also if it's not sealed, it will be like a flow connector. So you can have the hydrocarbon, what I mean, move across these faults. Uh, so it affects the flow path of your hydrocarbon. Because of this, it, they are very important. Faults are, are very important. So they are not simply like what we, 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 we plot here. Uh, faults are structurally complex, actually. Uh, they are consisting of a poor and a damaged, damaged area. So it's a zone. So the fault is not just a pain, it's a zone of damage. And actually it depends on, or it, yeah, it can 
seal or permit as we see the fluid and it uh, the, 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 to be a sealed fault or a non-sealed fault it depends on several geological uh, uh, processes like the degree of degradation for example the dissolution cementation uh, and mineral precipitation, uh, precipitation or precipitation or deposition uh, if you have breached yeah, you have calcite uh, uh, and, and so on but it depends on the stress state of uh, that that forms the fault in themselves so we can talk actually a lot about faults because they are uh, controlling uh, our substance uh, also, they can enhance the flow, of course. So, uh, we'll talk now about the stratigraphic framework. So, the stratigraphic architecture is very important because it identifies a geological control on fluid flow. So, we need to know uh, uh, our stratigraphic succession. And you know, as we mentioned in, in the previous lectures, that uh, we uh, 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 we use uh, the sequence stratigraphic branch of geosciences to understand the relations, the stratigraphic relationships between different layers. So from this, we can understand the lateral and vertical porosity and permeability, for example. So uh, uh, the, the, the stratigraphic relationships are very important because they establish the connections and barriers between reservoirs. So, uh, uh, it gives us context or communication over geologic time. It, it identified as the flow rate or affecting the flow rate or the communication about the production time. Uh, uh, so, because of that, they are very important and uh, different con considerations that we can get from the stratigraphy is the thickness uh, 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 of uh, the layer of the individual stratigraphic units, the relationship between stratigraphic units uh, and the juxtaposition of different units against each other uh, and the distribution of shale beds, for example, you know, shale is, is seal and at the same time it's a uh, source. So the stratigraphic framework is very important because uh, actually it defines uh, uh, the, 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 the flow in the subsurface and uh, from the, the sequence stratigraph you can understand the, the nature of the surface are these are erosional or depositional uh, 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 or we have over overlapping uh, truncation uh, uh, progradational sequence and what so going after that for the faces uh, as we're talking about the stratigraphy and 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 faces Ideally, is a distinctive rock unit that forms under certain geological conditions, for example, sediment, different sedimentations, uh, and this reflects particular process or environment. So, if if you take a look, for example, on, on this uh, uh, figure, which is for a carbonate fish, so this is how it looks. I can understand the, the word fish. So, this is if you have carbonate rock, you will see it like this. And if you have, for example, uh, uh, a marginal marine silt stone or sand stone, it will appear differently as you see. So you can now differentiate between the two fishes. You will understand that this is carbonate fishes because it has uh, its own color, it's a white color, for example, and there is uh, no stratification, for example. And But for the silt stone and sand stone, you will have stratification and it has yellowish, brownish color. So this is uh, uh, faces, and what I'm talking about faces now, it is depends on lithology, for example, because this is carbonate, and this is sand and silt, and this is what we call lethal faces. So, uh, faces can be uh, subdivided according to what you are using faces for, the nomenclature for. Are you uh, uh, split your faces according to lithology? So, it will be a lethal faces. If you uh, uh, divide or subdivide your rocks according to uh, paleontology, so it will be a biophage, and so on. So it depends on uh, uh, on that. So uh, uh, fishes is very important because it is uh, 
But I mean, no, or understand the type of rocks, you will understand its porosity and the effect of the mineralogy within each fish is to, uh, on your reserve. So let's ask ourselves on, on the fishes model. Why modeling fishes? Why we are modeling fishes? Uh, and this is what I'm, I, I try to uh, introduce to it now. So a given fish is, is both mappable, so I can, so it, it covers an area uh, that could be mapped and distinguishable, as we saw on the previous slide, uh, from surrounding fishes. So as we mentioned, I will repeat again, so you saw the carbonate fishes, you saw the uh, 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 silt and sandstone fishes and how are, they are look different. For modeling purposes, the fishes are usually defined by distinct prosody permeability distributions that allow unique and important flow units uh, to be uh, described. So I, I will describe my deposition process and uh, how uh, they are connected to each other, uh, my, my flow, how, how it will, uh, what I mean, uh, I, how can I describe my flow unit within the substance. Fishes also tend to have unique geometry and directional characteristics. So the knowledge of this can be powerful predictive tool when distributing uh, fishes in the field, for example, with poor uh, well control. Uh, so what I mean, I can expect if, if I don't have a lot of wells or I have sparse wells, so if I understand the fishes, I, I can know the extension of the fishes and understand where is my prosody uh, or, uh, goes and in which direction I have better prosody, I have better permeability, because permeability is, depends on prosody to, to uh, uh, a great extent. So uh, the, the, the fishes is very important because uh, uh, it controls the, the spatial distribution. Actually, uh, uh, we can have fishes have the same age, but different with different histology or whatever. So fishes are very important. We, we model fishes because uh, we use this to distribute our porosity and permeability within uh, the reservoir. Also, we use the seismic data for fishes. So we can, and we call it seismic fishes. So we talk now in, in these two slides about the geological fishes, okay? And we mentioned that we have different types of fishes. Actually, uh, it depends on how can I, how, how, how I'm sub subdividing them, if it is lithology or it is viso fishes, if it, on paleontology it is bio fishes, and to understand the importance of the fishes that affect the distribution of porosity and permeability in my world. So if I don't have enough geology, because the input of the geology is from the wells, so I can use seismic, because seismic covers more area, and I can use what called seismic fishes. So, and we, we run what seismic fishes analysis. That makes use of different seismic parameters in order to get other than structural information. You can interpret seismic as you want, okay, but in, in seismic fishes analysis, we interpret the seismic uh, to uh, identify or to find out the different fishes that they have. Uh, we should take into consideration when we, we, we do seismic uh, fishes uh, that uh, how the reflections look, how the amplitude look, uh, what is the, the, the dominant frequency of my data, uh, the reflection uh, polarity, the interval velocity, the reflection continuity, all of these are used to uh, uh, the geometry of the seismic reflections themselves. All of this can be used to identify the seismic fishes. And we interpret this uh, by the aid of geology. If I have even few number of wells, I can start to understand the, the, the lithology or, or, or whatever, the type of rocks per each fish. And we have like the flow, as you see on the on the screen, and understand uh, the uh, pattern of uh, the reflections, and then tie this to the environment of the position. So you can 
see that yes, I have here a slope uh, deposits, but and, and here I have like a shelf edge, a reef, and I have a connection. So let's see the output of seismic uh, uh, fishes analysis. Actually, uh, we can get either vertical sections or maps. So let let me show you a map uh, after we finish the interpretation and prediction from the seismic analysis. So have like a contour map like this. After you finish the, the seismic fishes analysis, you can distribute the depositional environment so we can identify that uh, this uh, zone is uh, uh, full of non-marine deposits. Uh, this zone has marginal marine deposits. This zone is a slow deposit, and this zone is characterized by basinal uh, uh, deposits. So I can use the seismic fishes analysis now to, to build my reservoir modeling or my subsurface geologic model and uh, distribute my fishes or my uh, uh, fishes depend on the, the seismic fishes uh, on the subsurface. So we can use different methods actually or different ways to model uh, our fishes within the reservoir, within uh, the reservoir modeling itself. So uh, uh, the, the two main uh, are the de either deterministic or stochastic, as I, I will mention to you. So deterministic uh, fishes uh, are often integrated with the uh, aid of seismic data and they can represent uh, depositional, lithologic or diagenetic features. Geologic features, of course. Uh, these interpretations are imposed on uh, the model in the form of maps or 3D uh, elements so that the cells contained within a fishes are assigned properties like the lithology, this is sand, this is carbonate, or the porosity or uh, permeability or whatever. So we put the con consistent con constituent of each species within this part. So I use here for, for, for the deterministic fishes, I use seismic data, for example, okay? But many fishes element cannot be uh, interpreted uh, as distinct features in seismic data. Each tool has its limitations. So if we said, if we mention that, if I have sparse wells, sparse wells means that few number of wells, so I will not be able to cover the, 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 whole, the whole area, my modeling, uh, and but I can use seismic to cover uh, more area. But uh, yani, what I mean is seismic is also has limitation. So for the fishes that I couldn't use seismic to uh, uh, interpret it, uh, uh, it is recognized that there is some uncertainty as their, their exact location within the reservoir uh, is not what I mean. Uh, 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 very well defined. So in this case, I will use the stochastic uh, fishes, and 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 the stochastic fishes uh, is uh, our stochastic technique is uh, we, we are using some geostatistical approaches that can estimate and calculate uh, the distribution of the fishes I have. So I I use uh, in this in stochastic fishes I use uh, different computer programs, and mainly we use what's called the GU statistical uh, features modeling. Uh, from this, we can know the distribution based on the relation. We find out the relation between uh, the seismic data, for example, and the well data, and from this, we can distribute that based on uh, equations or based on uh, uh, statistical techniques which were tweaked to serve the geoscience because of that it's called the geostatistics or, and the method is called the uh, stochastic fishes distribution. So we can use, so to, to distribute fishes in, in my reservoir model, it depends on the type of data I have. Uh, if I can have like uh, from wells and seismic data, I can, I can use a deterministic method uh, if uh, the, the fishes are not easily defined on the seismic, I will I will use the stochastic fishes distribution, and also I can use the 
geostatistical features this also uh, as i mentioned at, at, at the, the very beginning or on, on, on uh, the second slide that i can use in, in reservoir modeling or in geological modeling uh, data from uh, the subsurface and the surface and we mentioned in from the subsurface it's the logs from the drill wells and from service you can use seismic and also we can use outcrops and the outcrops are exposed logs. because of that G, the geoscientists uh, uh, arrange uh, field trips to to uh, uh, what I mean uh, uh, see the distribution of the rocks and the 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 uh, structure relationship and what else. so if I have uh, outcrops nearby the area that I'm modeling so using the outcrops would be of great benefit for me when I uh, build my so the outcrops for example this is uh, an outcrop of an alluvial fan you see you have a mountain and you have an alluvial fan so the parts that have the gray color and, uh, and this is how when it is solidified or whatever in the rock so so you can see from the outcrop, uh, uh, all the type of rocks, as you see, with different colors, which is different fishes, yes. And you have also a different fishes for the fan itself. And you see the geometry of the fan, how it is distributed. So, so uh, the outcrop uh, uh, analogs, you see analogs, because it, it represents a subsurface. So we have this located in the subsurface. So it provides qualitative and quantitative descriptions, actually, of the external, large-scale stratigraphic architecture for use in well log correlation and in defining the zones to be modeled. Actually, this is provide a lot of, under, uh, of information like understanding the geometry uh, of, of the rock to each other and the geometry within the rock itself. If I have cross bedding, if I have whatever, so I can know even the texture of the rock itself. So I can use that in the subsurface one when I uh, uh, model my faces or distribute my faces across the whole uh, uh, model. Uh, uh, we can use actually different tools that I'm gonna show you next. So uh, after that we'll, we'll, we'll do our rock property model. And rock property modeling is, is actually uh, uh, used to improve the understanding of the hydrocarbon distribution for volumetric analysis uh, for the reservoir and understanding the flow within the reservoir. There are two sources of rock property, actually, uh, uh, which are the logs uh, uh, and the coast. Okay, and, and to, to, to build my property model or to uh, uh, build my rock property model, uh, I need to know what are the most common properties that I need to model. They are the faces, uh, the total porosity, the horizontal permeability. Uh, what also is, is important are the water saturation and vertical permeability. So the rock and fluid properties that are measured, including porosity, water saturation, permeability, porosity, and porosity permeability relationship, uh, also the capillary pressure, the capability, all of these are uh, called the property modeling. So anything that can be expressed numerically, any piece of information, any piece of data that can express can be expressed numerically. Why is it numerically here? Because as we mentioned at the beginning, our model is a numerical. So we put all the geo geological and geophysical information to build a numerical. So when you have your model, you put just your mouse and you will read whatever the velocity, the permeability, the water saturation, the hydrocarbon saturation, uh, what any any type of properties that you need to. So this will be the final output of my of my model. So let's see how we model. Our porosity is 
directly tied to the fishes. And we mentioned when we talk about fishes that fishes is important because it gives me uh, the way of distributing the porosity and permeability within uh, the subsurface water. So, generally speaking, porosity is tied to fishes. Sometimes we also use local modification based upon seismic fishes, as we mentioned, and diagenetic fishes. So, method used to populate the models, populate means that distribute the, the porosity or populate is putting the, the porosity value within each cell of the model. So, we can use the deterministic method, and which is a much easier way. Is because you have wells, and in wells you acquire or you look porosity log, so you can calculate your porosity, and then you can distribute between wells. But as 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 you see, that uh, 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 the, uh, the deterministic, what I mean, would be would give you very small model, actually, because you have distance uh, or long distance between two the wells, as you see. So you like interpolate the values between the two ones. So how can I do this or I make this more uh, uh, realistic and uh, uh, obey uh, my data, which is the seismic data, for example, in the area, I will use the stochastic uh, uh, modeling because the stochastic covers the uncertainty, solves the uncertainties in between these two worlds. So, Suppose that I have these two wells, as I mentioned, if, if I use a deterministic way, I will take like, uh, for example, if I have a value at well 1 for the porosity is 20%, and the, the at well 2, and on the same depth, the porosity is 30%, so what you expect the porosity in between will be you know, 25, okay, because I took the average. So it is very smooth, I just take uh, 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 arithmetic average or, or, or mathematic average or whatever. But in the stochastic, it, it uses geostatistical, it uses different ways, value grams and whatever that you are going to show, uh, histograms, value grams, and so on. And it finds the relation between the well at the well location, the reading at the well location, with the seismic data. And you know that the seismic data is built up uh, uh, initially from dense and velocity. So it, finds a relationship and then start to uh, uh, apply this relationship on the seismic traces, seismic samples in between the two wells at, until it reaches the other well and will find the, the value is the same like the well and so on. So because of that, the stochastic is preferred because it covers all the uncertainties in the distribution or the population of the model. So, and, and at the end, as I just mentioned, you will end up with your uh, model, subsurface observer model or geologic model in general, but we prefer to use the stochastic models for the stochastic uh, uh, methods for the reasons that I just mentioned to you. So, uh, let's, let's talk about, also again, about the porosity. So, uh, what are the inputs that I need for, for the porosity? We need well look data because this is a direct measure. What I mean, you know that you can have like sonic log, density log, and neutron log, and each one read uh, the porosity by different uh, way. But you need uh, what I mean, the wells, because the wells are reading like every 0.1 meter or, or 0.5 feet uh, uh, as a road data from. Uh, the web. Uh, and then you can you can blocking this what I mean uh, these values to 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 fill your your, your cells and you have uh, like a vertical scale of this model cell. You can use after that uh, the histograms, for example, uh, to, to to show the distribution of your uh, porosity. Also, we can use the value grams. Uh, and we call the property program, and the property here is for the porosity. So, so value grams and, and histograms uh, are a method of distribution for my porosity within the subsurface. Uh, and we can define the relationship to fishes, the porosity to fishes, okay, and you start to uh, 
populate the cells of the model with your porosity. So you have the fishes and you have the, the relationship from, you start from the well and you have the distribution of your porosity through histograms and variograms and you find the, the, the relation with the fishes and then you populate uh, each cell with the uh, porosity. So we do, if we talk about porosity, so we should talk about permeability because permeability is very important and you understand what are uh, the different. Actually, also in populating or distributing permeability within our subsurface model, we have the two methods, either deterministic or stochastic. Which one will prefer? Yes, the stochastic because it covers all the uncertainties of the deterministic uh, method. So again, we'll have uh, the, the permeability, the input from actually the main, the main uh, source of, uh, of data for the permeability comes from the relationship between porosity and permeability. And you have and you use uh, value grams for this property and you have uh, what I mean, uh, you can have the relation between porosity and permeability and then you'll go to the fishes and find out the relation between the permeability and your faces and start to populate the cells according to the faces distribution. So we talk a lot about faces. So faces modeling is very important. Actually, it is of crucial, crucial importance. Uh, after, if 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 you uh, uh, drill wells, uh, okay, so you will need to integrate your production uh, data with uh, the well, uh, your production data and well test with your uh, model. So this is this will be updated. So if you start your model before the learning and you use this model to identify the drillable location, after you drill your well uh, and you run well tests, you will come up with some, info, some data and, and, and updated information. You have to update your uh, 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 static model or uh, the geologic model or the reservoir model actually by the, the fluid flow information that you gain from the well test. So from from this sort of information, you will have the permeability thickness and the average permeability at the well. Uh, you will have evidence of large scale uh, about the permeability. So you get more information about permeability which you use actually to put permeability from the beginning, you use the relation between permeability and the velocity. But when you have well test, you will have a real measurement for the permeability. Okay, and you understand more your uh, reservoir. So you will update your reservoir after this is so far. As we mentioned from the beginning, so any piece of information on the subsurface is very important to make value to your uh, subsurface model. Then evaluate uh, uh, our property model. So we'll ask ourselves or quality control, uh, do well time if I have well now with the seismic data and I use a stochastic, for example, the methods to, to do the population and whatever and the distribution of the physical parameter or the reservoir parameters and the fishes, uh, so uh, do well time if, at, at the well, which has logs that measure directly this uh, porosity or whatever. Uh, do I have the same value of the porosity? This is from what's mean by do well time, which is the formation toxic, because I'm using horizon from the sector is made there. Okay. Uh, are rock properties sorted by fishes? Uh, this correct or not? Are well data owner in general? Does model property distribution match the input distribution? Is visual uh, appearance satisfying the, 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 the tool I used before, like the variogram, for example? So I have, for example, as you see, the histograms and, 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 and the relationships or cross plotting to understand. Uh, what I have, do what I have, do what, what I built. I built in the model, a match at the well location. So wells are very important because 
they are not only uh, uh, used to uh, take the hard data from them, hard data means geological data and logging data, but also it is that they are very important because I use them for the quality control on my output or my uh, model that I do. Okay, because I use other methods than the deterministic method. Then I have to uh, 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 incorporate a feed. So incorporating a feedback is a, a key part for the modeling process. Uh, actually, it is rarely used, but it is very important actually uh, that you 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 incorporate the feedback after you drill and get uh, some updated uh, parameters and you build, for example, your uh, dynamic model or you have. Uh, simulation models to, to, to come back and feed to your static model and update it and which with, with all type of data that you can be insert or update your uh, subsurface. So, so, so the model, the reservoir model or the geo model, uh, uh, it is not a, a rigid model or, or you build it uh, once and that's it. No, you, you keep what I mean updating it uh, uh, as much as or as uh, uh, as much as you have data. If, if you have new data, you have to update your model again and again. And so it is. Uh, yes, it's called a static model, uh, but you can update it with all the information that you have uh, uh, that you can collect or you can have after the reading or what. So generally speaking. Uh, what I want you to, 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 to remember uh, is are, are that models are a collection of cells or boxes filled with numeric data. So we, 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 we change all of our geological and geophysical data into, into numbers or into numerical data or digits or digital data. And we fill these in boxes, which are the cells that I build my models. Uh, modeling is a team effort. Uh, no one can build a model by himself alone. Uh, models should be fit for purpose and carefully planned. What what I mean by fit for purpose? Uh, do I build my model uh, at the very beginning in a new area? So I I I, I have very few number of words and even I don't have words. Uh, so what what is the reason that I built this model? Okay, to understand where are the the, the basins and where are the highs. So this is I, I should build my model for that purpose. If I build my model to to identify new locations for drilling, so I have to use lot of data uh, uh, to 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 enhance this or to facilitate this. So most models built as input for fluid flow simulation models. Uh, this is what I want you to, to remember again. A good model captures the reservoir's key flow characteristics. Uh, stochastic methods are preferred for distribution for of flow properties more than deterministic. Why? Again, deterministic is very smooth because it is built on very simple uh, averaging of the data, but the stochastic, what I mean, use uh, up to uh, up to date uh, 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 mathem uh, mathematical or geostatistical approaches to distribute my data and cover the uncertainties of the de deterministic. So, what are the main steps in modeling? Just to uh, uh, to remind you, the stuff you remember the resources, the stuff and the planning of the project. Uh, you need to gather and you see the input data. Uh, you will build your framework of, you remember the frameworks? Yes, structural and stratigraphic, and you know the reasons for both. We build the fishes modeling with model, which is very important for the property models. Because of that, we build the fishes model at the beginning and then the property modeling. Then I evaluate my model by quality controlling, as we mentioned, and then I will use my, my model for like fluid flow simulation, for wheel planning, for volumetric calculations, uh, to understand fork seals and whatnot. 
So again, I want to repeat this again. And this is what we're going to, to build our model, and these are the steps in turn, what I mean. Uh, one after one, at the beginning, they should plan very well. I should staff uh, my team uh, with experienced people of different disciplines. Then I should gather all the, the data that I can and the quality control this data, and then build a structure framework, followed by a stratigraphic framework, followed by building the features model, then building the rock property model, then evaluate my model and the quality control it. And then I use my model for the purpose that I built on this. With this, I conclude my mission.